So this is our fourth part in the lecture on genes and how they work. Um, again, just re-emphasizing some of the key things, the central dogma, DNA codes into RNA, RNA codes into amino acids. Transcription is when DNA codes into RNA. Translation is when RNA codes into the amino acids. And keep in mind, when we're going from DNA to RNA, when we create the RNA strand, it's a single strand, and there are adenines, uracils, cytosines, and guanines. There is no thymine there. Okay, so ideally, everything works well. The DNA goes to the RNA, RNA goes to the amino acids, and it creates a protein, and it expresses a trait. <clears throat> and everything's good, healthy, normal. But the reality is, DNA sometimes messes up. The transcription or translation process can also mess up. So this is what we call mutations. Now mutations are simply changes in the genes or altered genes. They're not always bad. Sometimes they're good. A lot of times they're what we call neutral. Okay, so mutations usually come in a couple different varieties. One variety here is a point mutation that will actually alter a single base. So it's a point on the DNA strand, like right here. Boom. That particular information is altered. One specific spot. Maybe it's a base substitution in which the T in the DNA strand got replaced by a C or the T got replaced by a G, or maybe the T got replaced by an A. Who knows what, but it's a point on the DNA strand in which the base is substituted. So the wrong letter is in that spot. That sometimes can lead to nothing. You wouldn't even notice it. Sometimes it leads to a change that produces a mutation. The blue-eyed baby. Blue eyes are a mutation. It's a change in the gene. The original eye color gene was for dark eyes. All of our earliest ancestors for human beings all had dark eyes. And then in Europe, somewhere in a European environment, about six to 10,000 years ago, someone had a mutation for the gene that dictates eye color, and that started producing light eyes. It's not a bad thing at all. It doesn't hurt the child, doesn't hurt anybody. So just a type of mutation, which no big deal. Now, in the case of sickle cell anemia, well, that's not a good mutation. That change in the chromosome, that switch in the DNA here that causes the protein shape to be altered leads to problems. So that can be a negative mutation. And we look at our poor little piglet down there. Don't know what's going on with, is it two heads, one head? Hat one and a half heads, etc. That's definitely a negative mutation, and that's not going to serve that animal well if it survives. So that's what we want to keep in mind with mutations. Good, bad, neutral. The key there is the environment that the mutation happens in. Okay, so here's a couple examples. Here's our normal code. DNA, the coding template, the messenger RNA, and the protein that should be formed. And what has happened here is a thing we call a silent mutation. Simply, some letters got switched out, but you know, they didn't change anything. You're still getting the same four amino acids, methionine, proline, theronine, arginine, and then it stops. Exact same code doesn't change anything. That's why it's called silent. The likelihood is all of us have silent mutations in our DNA and it doesn't do anything to us. Another example is when we have what's known as a missense mutation. This is where the amino acids get switched. So we have methionine, proline, theronine, histonine, and then it stops, and oops, wait a minute, it wasn't supposed to have this particular pattern of amino acids. We were supposed to have this original pattern, methionine, proline, theronine, arginine, but instead, Histidine got switched in there, and now we have a different type of protein. The shape has changed, the structure has changed. Uh, the nonsense mutation is where the 
protein, the amino acid chain, or the protein that's being formed, actually gets shortened. So we're supposed to have, let me come back here, we're supposed to have four amino acids, thionine, proline, theronine, arginine, stop. In the nonsense, the stop got moved earlier. So you only have two amino acids instead of four. That could be significant. That could create a very different protein structure that could be significantly problematic for the organism. So there's all sorts of ways that mutations can occur. It just depends upon a lot of chance with where it happens. Okay. So here's an example that is in the human population right now. It's called sickle cell anemia. So the normal sequence for our amino acids, and these amino acids are what will create the shape for the red blood cell. So take a look at here's a string of amino acids, the nucleotides that determine those amino acids, and that gives us a normal round kind of biconcave disc red blood cell. But when all of a sudden this amino acid or this nucleotide gets switched, so instead of an A, it's switched to a T. When that T gets trans, um, transcribed and then translated, it becomes valine. So the first amino acid's the same, second one's identical, third one's identical. It's the fourth amino acid here that, uh-oh, that's different. Fifth, sixth, seventh are all okay, but because that one there is different, it completely changes the shape of the protein, and that causes the blood cell to have this type of shape. Now that sickling shape leads to sickle cell anemia and all the health problems associated with it. So that's definitely a negative mutation, and we know exactly where that is occurring on the chromosome. Other examples include things called frame shift mutations. This is where you add or delete a base, and it literally alters and shifts the entire sequence of codons. Because remember, a codon has to be set in three letters. Three, 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 three. So if you pop out the G here and remove that, the two A's grab this G, and that becomes AAG, which now codes for a different amino acid. The CA grabs that C, brings it over, CAC, codes for histidine, the GT is left by itself, it can't do anything. So frame shift mutations can be significant. If you remove a base or add a base, is usually what we call frame shift mutation. Very, very problematic. The triplet repeat mutation is where we see certain patterns, certain triplets or codons repeat it over and over and over and over, and that leads to some problems. The example of Huntington's is back here, back to us again. Huntington's is a genetic disorder we inherit from our parents. It's a dominant variation, but fortunately it is very, very rare. But what research is showing is that on that gene or on that chromosome for Huntington's, there is this repeating CAG codon just over and over and over and over and over up in that section of the chromosome that causes the protein to be mutated which is what is leading to the neural cell degeneration creating the problems of Huntington's. So who knows hopefully in the future genetic analysis and maybe gene therapy can change us. So we can only hope. Okay so with chromosomal mutations some terminology <clears throat> some general information get down. In a deletion, you are losing a piece of the chromosome. All right, so <clears throat> pieces being deleted, it's lost. That's what deletion refers to. Duplication, you are going to copy a piece of the chromosome. So maybe instead of AAA, you now have 5As or 6As or 7As or whatever it is, but you're just copying it. You're actually adding information when you do a duplication with the chromosome. Oh, let me get that back. Okay, inversion. Inversion is when you flip the chromosome or flip the 
codon. So example, TAG, when that flips, maybe it flips to GAT. <clears throat> so now GAT will transcribe differently and possibly produce a different amino acid when it is translated than what TAG would have. And for whatever reason, that information just flips, gets flipped over. Translocation is when a piece of DNA is relocated on a different chromosome. All right, now this is not the same as crossing over. Crossing over is you cross over with your buddy. Translocation is where you may have a chunk of information on chromosome 7, and for whatever reason it gets flipped over to chromosome 15. It's not supposed to buddy up with 15. 7 buddies up with 7, 8 with 8, and so on. So pieces of information get flipped around and moved around. It's like taking a chapter out of your biology book and sticking it into your history book. That's translocation. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be in that book, and it's going to create or potentially create some problems for us. All right, so as we look at mutations, it's just a visual aspect. Deletion, you should have A through J for whatever reason. B, C, D, e, B, C, D gets deleted, and now you have a different piece of information here. <clears throat> Duplication, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. And for whatever reason, B, C, D gets duplicated. So you read A, B, C, D, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. So we're still struggling with trying to figure out why this happens, how it happens, but more importantly, how can we control it or fix it? That's the key with biotechnology and genetic engineering. Um, inversion, here's our example. You're flipping your letters around, so B, C, D, E. And for whatever reason, it now reads A, D, C, B, E. You just switched them. Reciprocal translocation. I said that's flipping information from one chromosome to another that it should not normally flip information to. And it can create significant problems when that information is going to be expressed. So you have the wrong information on this chromosome, the wrong stuff here. Again, it can lead to some, some, some significant problems. So to summarize and wrap it all up, mutations are the starting point for evolution. Okay, Changes, that's what mutations are. They are the starting point for genetic diversity in species. So why we are all a little bit different is because of mutations that have occurred throughout the course of our species history. Mutations can be good, they can be bad, or they can be neutral. The key on this is the environment. The environment influences if the mutation is good, bad, or neutral. Okay, That's the key, the environment. If it happens in a certain environment, it may cause the organism to increase its reproductive success. It passes on the mutation. Its children are successful. Its grandchildren are successful. And now that variation persists in the population. And wow, it becomes more apparent that that is a good mutation. Or it could cause the organism not to survive. Those tend to get weeded out pretty quickly. If you die, you can't pass on your genetics. You can't pass on those, ge those negative mutations. Some of them still persist in the populations because they get carried and then occasionally show up. But as I mentioned before, a lot of our mutations are neutral. They don't do anything. Most of them are not even expressed, and we don't even know that they're there. Okay, So we have lots of this happening. The idea is trying to get more aware of it and a better understanding on how DNA transcribes into RNA and RNA translates into the amino acid chain.